Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockeiner. Today I share a simple phishing email. In today's video, rather than sharing some news, I'm actually going to show you one of the many types of phishing emails that are very common to get in different organizations. Mostly to show you some of the new techniques that bad guys are using to try to lure your users into doing something they obviously shouldn't. With that said, let's take a look at this phishing email. Okay, before I start, I just want to point out that I'm doing this in a specially crafted virtual machine made for malware analysis, and I'm protected. Typically, you never want to interact with unsolicited email attachments or click on potentially malicious links the way I'm going to be doing in this particular example. Recently, folks at our organization have started seeing emails similar to this, and this is actually a pretty common phishing example. Uh, in this particular email, the main thing I want to point out is really the lure the bad guy is using. Many users out there use Office 365 and they might use Microsoft Voice capabilities where it can take your voicemail messages and actually email you telling you not only that you have a voicemail message but perhaps actually attaching that message so you can listen to it. Typically in my case anyways these attachments come as WAV files that you can listen to rather than the PDF you see in this email attachment. But in any case your user are probably used to interacting with these type of Microsoft voicemail messages. So this might be a lure that tricks them to interact more than they normally would. Now, first tip here, number one giveaway. This says it's coming from Microsoft Voice, and do know I'm actually censoring this URL to protect the instant innocent, but in this case, this URL has nothing to do with Microsoft. So if you get email that says it's from one place, but the actual domain in the email address is something different, that's one giveaway it's bad. Uh, in any case, let's go ahead and look at what's attached here. Now, this has a PDF document attached, and in some cases, malicious PDF documents can sometimes be designed to exploit vulnerabilities in an unpatched version of Adobe Reader. That's not the case for this example. In this particular example, this is actually just a benign uh, PDF document. However, as you can see here, it's a PDF document with a link. It looks just like some message from Office telling you you've received a voicemail, and there's no malicious code in this document. Rather, it's trying to get you to click on a particular link, and that's really where the phishing attack starts. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on this bad link, and you can see I go to a particular site that has nothing to do with the real Office 365. In fact, the good news is this site is old enough that Google safe browsing already knows that it's a bad site. But for the sake of argument, I'm going to force my browser to it because there could be new sites doing the same thing. Now when I go to this site, I get a pop-up saying, hey, Office 365 has logged out. To listen to the voicemail, you need to log in again. And you get this page which obviously looks like a pretty legitimate Office 365 login asking you for your username and your password. It also asks you for your phone number which is atypical. But again, tip number two for your users. A big giveaway here is this particular domain name has nothing to do with Office 365. If you're ever asked to log in, in in a case like this, it's obviously just some bad guy that when you enter whatever credentials you do here, if you clicked on listen to voicemail, they're actually just stealing your credentials. So in any case, that's an example of a very common uh, type of phishing attack. And this is kind of a low technology attack that PDF email is not using any sort of exploit to take over your system. Now the good news, by the way, is just like Google Safe Browsing, if you're using our total security web blocker, already happens to know that that particular domain is unsafe. Uh, we have it, comp we have it uh, categorized as a compromised website. So if you're using WebLocker, we wouldn't let your users go to that particular phishing site. Nonetheless, there's brand new phishing sites every day. So you definitely want to train your users what to look for in these emails. They should never interact with uh, suspicious uh, documents or files that are in uh, unsolicited emails. If they do open a document and it asks you to click on a link, they should be even more suspicious. And finally, if you actually go to a site that's pretending to be a very common login, but it's at some other domain, that's a dead giveaway that this is a bad place and your users shouldn't enter their information. 
Well, I hope that was illuminating, and I hope it also shows you some of the new tricks that these fishers are using to try to get your users to interact with their emails. So what can you do about this? Well, first of all, train your users about it. Make sure they know they shouldn't interact with documents from unsolicited emails. Uh, really, you should try to avoid opening documents you don't expect because some documents actually contain exploits. But even in this case where the document might have a link, you should definitely train your users never to click on weird links, whether they're in email emails themselves or whether they're buried within a document that you get in an email. And finally, make sure they know about phishing. In this case, it would have been simple to recognize this uh, site as a phishing site because the URL did not match Office 365 at all. In some cases, technical means can't help you. In this case, that PDF document was relatively benign. It's not until your user goes to this particular link and enters his credentials that there's any problem. So make sure to also train your users so they don't do silly things. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching.